the new season. We are not going to operate at the same level that we were in some years back. God is elevating us to a level that we have never been in. Amen. Can you say, I am rising to a higher level where I have never imagined in my life? Amen. The Bible says, verse 20, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. There is a place God has prepared for us. A better place. He says, I will bring you. And he says, he will be leading you with an angel. Now, if you look at that word angel, the word angel there is capital. I have not written it in a small Behold, I, am, I, I, sh, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. In other words, you are safe even on the way. And to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be aware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. Who is this angel? That when you offend him, he cannot forgive you? Who is that angel? God is telling the Israelites, this is after they have just left Egypt. I will send ahead of you an angel who will direct your path. You need to listen to him. Do not provoke him because he will not pardon you. For my name is in him. May you always be on the right path in Jesus' name. Our going, our, our way of life is not always in line with the will of God. That is why sometimes you find accident. If I'm saying accident, I'm not, I don't mean, I can also mean the, or the, the kind of accident that normally happens. But what I mean is, the accident I'm meaning here is, when things do not go as you expect. And then you sometimes wonder, why are things not happening the way I, I expect? When you get off track from where God has been leading you, that's what I'm calling accident. Because you get lost. Nairobi. Mali waka. Hmm? Hmm? I am saying that God will guide you in Jesus' name so that you will not lose track. He says, I have sent an angel. He will speak to you. He will direct you. But you don't provoke him, he says. Hmm? In this life, you need to be guided. You need to be directed. I know by then the Holy Spirit was not there. Yeah, we, I think easily we can think he's the, he's the Holy Spirit. But what I'm trying to say is, if you look at ourselves at the moment, uh, we have the Holy Spirit with us. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, you will hear a voice from behind, behind you, that will tell you this is the way walk there in how are we led as who are spiritual yesterday i was standing here and preaching like i've done and then i heard a voice 30 days three hours amen 
30 days 3 hours can you say 30 days <laughs> 3 hours that is 30 days of 3 hours prayer non stop I received a voice as we were standing here and I think for those of you here I told you this is the kind of voice we are talking about I will be here next week from Monday from 9pm to 12am for the next 30 days very fiery prayer will be happening where in this place he guides us from where from our inside he gives us instruction from our inside and any instruction that he gives us will always lead us to a higher place of glory I believe after 30 days of that prayer we will not be at the same place and, and that kind of prayer is not everybody will pray that kind of prayer 9 p.m. until 12 a.m. When the Holy Spirit gives instruction, he knows at the end of it all there is glory. God will always ask us to do things that will, will make us to feel like we have sacrificed too much. Be aware of him and obey his voice. He says in verse 22. Verse 21. Sorry, 22 he says. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. And do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto your enemies. And an adversary unto your adversaries. Wow. When you receive the voice of God. The instruction of God. And you begin obeying instantly your enemies become his enemies instantly I think sometimes we, we fight battles that we should not buy, fight yeah kuna fight zingine tuna fight wakati mwingine unapigana na mtu ameniambia hivi alisema hivi amesema wewe just realign yourself with God and let God take care of your enemies amen do you people have enemies? Nobody has enemies. We have so many enemies. Human beings. There are some human beings who are always opposing us. There are sorcerers somewhere that are working against us. There are witches that are working against us. When I was in Ethiopia the other day, those prophets, the one that came here the other day. There was a, a spell that was released for the father of another boy. Wali tupa tu kitu. Wali taka baba yaki ya kue, uyu mzee ya kue kilema. Kiwete. Na kia na mdogo wa kakanyaga. There is firstborn. So migu ika bend. I think it is on my name post on our Facebook. Migui kabendi kakua. So walimbeba wakam letter kwa conference. So the prophet prayed for that boy. And the, the, the leg, the bended leg did what? So she said, what was sent for the father got the, the child. When you walk with God, nothing the enemy does against you shall prevail on your life. Nothing. You live a life free of stress. You live a life free of struggle. You know something called struggle? Maisha ni ngumu. You can't talk about maisha ni ngumu 
when you're worshiping him in spirit and in truth, when you're doing what the word of God says, all God is saying here is, hear my voice and do what the one that I sent is telling you. I want you to look at this verse. This, this verse is for the Old Testament people. In fact, we need to live a more glorious life more than these people here. Us, we need to live a better life. They don't even have the Holy Spirit like we have. The biggest challenge of any believer is to obey God. The Bible says this, you go and do exactly opposite. Can you say, Lord, give me grace to obey your voice every day of my life? The problem is if you obey, if you don't obey what he tells you, he turns to be your enemy. The worst thing about an anointed person who has lost his ways is the anointing on the inside will turn him against God. It began with the devil, Shetani. He was anointed, he rebelled, and he became the enemy of of God. Saul is another one, King Saul. He rebelled against what God told him and he became the enemy of <laughs> the enemy of God. May God give you grace to obey in Jesus name. When you obey you rise. Hmm? I want to pray this prayer for you this day. That when anybody looks at you beginning now, until Jesus comes, your life goes up and up and up and amen. Is it possible? Yes. You can just go up and up and up. And it is not any human being that has caused. It is God of heaven and earth that will cause that one to happen. Amen. Look at verse 23. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring you in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Havites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. You know what this is saying? I want you to be careful to listen to me. From Monday, there is something I'm speaking. And I've been reading something like this from Monday until now. I don't know why. Look at this. Look at verse 23. I want you to listen to this. For my angels shall go before you and bring you in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. He has told them. Canaan belongs to you. But all tribes, these tribes are there. All these tribes that are written here. He says, as you go, I will know how to remove them from the land. And I give you the land. Is there somebody who wants a land here? I'm asking a question. Is there somebody who wants a land here? Is there somebody? And some people are not even dreaming of getting a land. You, I get a piece of cool I'm just asking you a question. Is there somebody who wants a land? Or I'm speaking to the wrong audience? Rent. Rent. I wish God will open your eyes. And you look. Miles Munro once said, one time, God opened his eyes. And he took him to heaven. He went and saw things that were stored in heaven for him. And he was, living, he was living in abject poverty. He landed back here. He said, I will never be poor any day of my life. Can you make that statement? Are you ready to say that? Or you are enough with the poverty that you have? As far as I'm concerned, we have not reached riches. Us, uh, even as a ministry, we have not. The day I begin seeing 50 million in the church account, then I know now we have begun. 
How many? 50 million. That's the day that I now I say, I have seen this small thing, thousands, hundreds. This small, small. Until we put a tower in this town, divine life, Look at this verse. It says, I will drive them out from before you. In other words, you are the one who will come and buy that land. Ukinunua shamba. So unafukuza yomtu. And as a fanya chochote hapo ndani. I don't know why you are. I don't know. I don't know which season you think you are in. Hmm? He says, I will drive them out of the land. In other words, there are people who are sitting in your land, living in your land. <laughs> there are people. This land, this ministry has over 24 acres. And somebody is living in it. They will live. We'll chase them and put up a mega church. Nini muko hapa, tu hapa. Mangini wameenda mbele. Huh? Look at this. And it happened, he did for them. Can you say anybody that has my possession, I command you to bring it to me in Jesus' name. Anyone that is in my land, I remove you from my land and I get it back in Jesus' name. I know I'm speaking like a, a cheese, you know, like a crazy, see you. Like a crazy. Well, what I'm talking is, uh, it doesn't make much sense. Says, for some of us, it is fantasy. You, you're like, pastor is daydreaming. I am not daydreaming. I don't daydream. Amen. I don't daydream. I don't. I don't daydream. I am telling you what I am hearing. Verse 24. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do, do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. What is this saying? This one is talking about they are worshipping idols in the land. The idol they are worshipping is having influence over the land. You, when you come, break those altars, remove it, establish the altar of God, and you, the land, by the presence of God in that land, that's what he's telling them. People become strong spiritually. If you see any ruler, a spiritual person cannot be broke. Can I repeat this? A spiritual person cannot be. And when I'm talking about a spiritual person, I'm not only talking about a believer who is a, a spiritual person. I'm talking about even those ones who are on the other side, but spiritual. They do things in their own altars, sacrifices they make. And they come and take over a town like this. Hindus, Muslims, who are reigning in the cities, towns of Kenya, they are spiritual more than believers. A Christian who is spiritual cannot be poor. I listen to Pastor Chris who was saying yesterday. It is not about the money, whether you have money or you don't have money. With empty pocket, you can rule a place if you're spiritual. <laughs> Are you able to hear this? With empty pocket that the money is not inside, you can rule a city. Did Jesus come with the money? I'm asking a question. Did Jesus come with money? I'm being good. I'm talking about being good. Money is not God's idea. 
Money is never God's idea. God never invented money anywhere. All you need to become is you, be, you need to become a strong spiritually. So that when you come into a place and then you take your worship serious. If this other religion, Hindus, Islam, are doing their things seriously and they are taking over towns and where we do class, we have been going to class every month in Nairobi, on Mombasa Road. Kuna Hindu amejenga gorofa karibu kumi na tano. Pastalai amechukua gorofa moja na nalipa 390k per month. Na hizo zote zenye lijenga, it is ayat. And people have Wana watu wako ndani na wanalipa pesa ngapi? 390. Ha? Mant. Sisi tuna tunashangaa na hii ya 50k. Uyu, this Indian anachukua that amount. From all this per month. Hey, may God make you rich. <laughs> and I want a rich believer who is spiritual. I don't want a rich believer who is carnal. You know carnal? Whose money does not even go to church in the name of tithe. That is a very poor person. If you contain a million in your account and you can't give a tithe, you are as good as a poor person as far as God is. In fact, people who don't give tight are poor. All of them. It looks like an abuse. Very poor. Why are you conscious of what you don't have? <laughs> you are very poor. That's why you can't help anybody. People who don't give sight can't help anyone. Too selfish. Kuri <laughs> Saizi pia elfu mbili ni? Ni nyingi. Na wea unataka mungu wa kubariki. Kutoka wapi? From where? I told you people here yesterday. I told you here. I was talking about building your capacity to become spiritual. The first thing I said is you need to pray more. You see, as I was speaking yesterday, I was say, talking here that for you to build your capacity spiritually, if you build your capacity spiritually, you'll be above all. So one area is the area of prayer. If you can pray for long hours. As I was speaking that word here, I had three hours prayer. Yeah? Long hours! This morning I also tell him some people here in the morning, in morning devotion. If you can't read a chapter per day and you want to tell me you're strong spiritually, you're very weak. You can collapse anytime. No wonder a small problem comes and you are kama <laughs> magunia. You want to say you're strong? At least read five chapters of the Bible per day. And then finish the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation in a year. Then I can call you strong. Otherwise, you are very weak. Nikaratasi tu inatembea. Wapio pio. Inatemba inanda na wea. I have watched the people's life who are very strong and have established a big ministry. Bishop Cathel was here the other week. Last month. He told us he reads 10 chapters pa. And he's in charge of 27 churches. 
Wewe hata chapter moja na unasema wewe ni spiritual. Oh my god. If you can pray three hours non stop you can turn something around. I think the other same thing I said is if you want to have money you don't pray for money you do what? Give. If you want more money give more. If you want less money give. <laughs> give less. <laughs> wow. I don't know why I'm coming there. That is how you become strong. You become financially strong when you give more. You become very strong in the knowledge of the word of God when you when you take enough of the word of God every day. Now, when you now begin prayer, long hours of prayer, after 30 days of three hours of prayer, praise and worship, I think Juma is here, and these guys are here. We are praying for three hours from Monday. From that, that is around the what? Monday is when? Monday is that... 16 and we are praying until that 15 of October. Now morning devotion equal. Amen. I mean to call us 4 p.m. ni mesimama. Ata baada ya 9 to straight leaf. 4 p.m. tuko. Paka 6. Ukitaka kwenda kuanguka kwa kitanda enda anguka. <laughs> Let me read another verse and I finish. You see, when we do that kind of prayers, if you don't pray more than Muslims, you will never take over this land. Ata hii biashara nyumu naona. Sababu ya wao kuwa wengi kuliko njini, na kuwa tajiri kuliko njini, wanaomba kuliko. Ie nyemi nasema inakani kama... If you want to do more than them, you must pray more than... If you want to have more money than them, you must give more than them. Who are best givers? Believers or Muslims? I'm talking to Skiye. Nana naomba kuliko mungine? Sisi tukiombea chai imetosha. Mungu wa santi. Nimekupata chakula. Nanda unanguka kwa kitanda. Mungu wa santi nimeshinda vizuri. Asubuhi unaamuka kama kama maiti tu eh thank you nimeamuka Na unaenda kuishi ile maisha yenye hata wewe mwenyewe unajirumia It is a tragedy not to be strong spiritually Mimi sijui ulikuja kusikia nini Unaenda hapa anasema verse 24 anasema Nikiwaleta katika inchi ambao ni, ni, ni mewapatia ahadi. Utakutana na wale ambao wanaishi pale. Wanao abudu miungu mingine. Tanda kubomoa miungu zao. Na kuwaondoa. Na kuanza ibada yangu pale. This is what verse 24 is saying. But thou shalt not bow to their gods. Nor serve them. Nor do after their works. But thou shalt overthrow them and quite break down their images. Who is worshipping more than the other? Muslims or Christians? Who is worshipping more? As long as their worship is strong, you will still remain under. Look at verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And you shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Do you want to tell me it is a must to fall sick? Look at this verse. Hmm? 
And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless your bread. You will bless your bread when you serve him. Not when you just eat it. <laughs> Without serving it. No wonder some of us eat food and then we have sickness in the body. No service of God. So you eat and it becomes another thing in the stomach. <laughs> you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and thy water and I will take sickness away from among your mid from the mid east. Look at verse 26. Very powerful. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land and the number of the days I will fulfill. Let me read in NLT. There will be no miscarriages or infertility among your people. And I will give you long life, full lives. Lies. We are not serving God the way he's asking us. That's why we are dying any holy. And then we say, Mugali. Ama Mungu na danganya apa. Mungu na danganya. No. He means what he says. We serve him casually. And he's not in our life. Tunajengkade di mungu mungu atu. No wonder tunayiba mungu usini 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 pite. Yeah. You know those kind of songs. It's a zote zinatokana na kutoishi jinsi ambavyo Mungu anataka. Unikumbuke. Remember me almighty God. Instead of singing remember me, serve God as he expects and he will forever be with you. Amen. Wacha nisome hii then nitamalizia hapo. I will send my fear before you and they will destroy all the people and you will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and I will make all your enemies turn their backs unto you. Your enemies run from you. Saisi tumepigana na adui. Like even when we pray, we are fighting the air. You have so many enemies, so many opposition, so many things. You are fighting everything. Na ni kama kitu If your ways praises, pleases the Lord. Verse 30 says, look at verse 29, I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against them. Look at verse 30. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Wow. Little by little, I will drive these people out of your way. In other words, I will bless you depending on your capacity. Little by, I increase you little by little until you take over the whole area. Amen. It is powerful. It is powerful. Amen. Wow, I think that is enough. This is, this is what we have. This is, this is the future we have. God, want, God wants to cause success in your personal life. Get this one from me as you leave. Come on, just get your chote skiai. Atunamalizi hapa. God wants you to be so successful as an individual. Until your success will dominate the environment that you're in. It's not enough to have a vehicle, a, a car, or whatever. No, no. After you are blessed. You can have dominion over your area until you begin ruling the area. Until people become, come to God in numbers through you. Amen. I think that is enough for now. <laughs> we can give and finish our service here. In Jesus name. To be continued.